This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. Now we're going to build an API endpoint, which is a specific URL or web address where a user or application, front end application, can access a set of resources or functionality provided by our web application, our API service. So in our scenario, we have a front end React application that we're going to be developing. And that's going to send a request to, for example, localhost API server. And that's a resource that our API can then identify that will be attached to some sort of logic, potentially then to access data in the database. And then that data can then be collected and returned back to the front end. First up, we're going to be building an endpoint, which will be able to take in a parameter, which is going to be the category ID and return a list of servers that is associated to that particular category. So in our scenario, we're going to have multiple servers, potentially. Those servers are connected to categories. So it might be sport or education, etc. So a user may need or want or choose to search for servers based upon a particular category. So head over to the server app and then in views, that's where we're going to start building our endpoint. Now there are two approaches here, function based views and class based views. So our approach, we're going to be utilizing view sets, which is a class based view. Now we won't go into the details or the benefits or drawbacks of utilizing each approach. Um, some prefer simply to use functions over classes or if you delve a little bit deeper, you'll find there are certain benefits of utilizing classes. It can potentially speed up the development process utilizing built-in classes. because These classes are connected to functionality that's already pre-written. So it makes it easier for us to quickly kind of add and bolt on different features without having to write too much code. So Again, it's going to be up to you how you want to write these functions. Check out the Django DRF documentation if you want to maybe convert what we're writing here into function based views. OK, so like I said, we're going to be utilizing view set, which is a class that provides CRUD operations. So create, return or retrieve, update and delete operations for a model. It acts as a, a bridge, if you like, between the model and the serializer, allowing us to create a simple and powerful API with very little amount of code. I'm going to stop talking about that. You can go ahead and check out the Django documentation for further information, but let's just go ahead and start creating our new endpoint. Now, what we're going to be doing here, this approach, we're going to be utilizing one endpoint and we're going to utilize multiple parameters in order to return different data from this particular endpoint. Now there's two approaches here that we can take. Now we could create an endpoint for every single resource that needs to be accessed. So for example, we could create an endpoint for category so we can return server by category. We could create then another endpoint so that we could return, for example, all servers that are related to a particular user or a user is a member of. With this type of approach where you're developing an endpoint for every single resource that needs to be accessed, that can lead you to having many, many endpoints and becomes a little bit unmanageable. So the second type of approach, which we're going to be following in this course, is to create an endpoint, but to allow it to pass in multiple parameters so that we can return different resource based upon the parameter that's passed in. So essentially, we're just building some sort of or a simplistic filtering type of system. Different approaches have different strengths and weaknesses. A good developer is able to identify the approach that's appropriate for that particular scenario. Right, so let's get cracking. Right, so let's all, first of all, let's bring in the view sets that we're going to need. So let's import view sets. Let's set up our class here, view sets dot view set. There we go. So like I said, ViewSet is a class that provides a CRUD, create, retrieve, 
or create return, as I call it, update and delete operations for a model. So we're extending here from view sets to create this new class as a view set. So what we have now is access to the built in methods of view set, and that's going to be list, create, retrieve, update, uh, destroy, and then there's one more which is partial update. There we go. So we have access to all of those functions now within our class. So what we need to do is to identify the type of request that's being sent or that's going to be sent, yep, yeah, to the URL, which is going to be attached to this view set. And that's going to be a, a get request. So from the front end, we're going to be sending a message, a get request, to or get yeah get request to this endpoint to retrieve data related to the server in this case we're going to be retrieving data about the servers or we're going to re be returning servers that are related to a particular category so what we need to do is look at the documentation and we find that the list function in the view set is used for get request to retrieve a list of instances or objects from the database. So that's what we're going to need to extend from and utilize here in view set. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. So we're going to need to define the list function or method here. We're going to take in self and request so we can access the details about the request. There we go. It's a standard type of um, object oriented programming and Django principles. Right, so now we have that information. Let's go ahead now and define, well, first of all, actually, we need to capture the category. So we're going to be sending a request to this endpoint, and in that request is going to be the ID of the category. So we're going to need to extract that out, request.query params. So we're going to get the category ID. Now that's going to have a reference of category. There we go. So we'll set that up in the URL. So that's going to capture then the category ID that's being passed into this endpoint. Right. So now we have that information. We can now go ahead and think about actually running some sort of query to return all the servers related to that category. So what we can do is we can start with the full query set. So one of the benefits of utilizing a function like this is we can define the query set just once. So we can reuse code where possible. So we're going to dot query set. There we go. So what exactly is that? Query set equals self dot query set. So let's go ahead and create a new function list. So that's what's going to be expected in our view set to be utilized or it's going to be rooted when anyone sends a get request to this endpoint. It's going to be rooted here to this list, if you like. So in here, we're going to pass in self and the request. OK, and now we need to think about capturing the category data. So we're going to store. Remember, someone's going to be sending a request or the front end is going to be sending a request to this endpoint. A get request is going to be captured here, and we're going to capture then the parameters that is going to be passed in or sent with the request. So we're just going to, going to we're just going to grab that data. So query uh, params dot get, and that's going to be accessed via the kind of key category. So that's how we're going to grab that data. So we now have a way of capturing the category ID. So let's go ahead now and start to think about the query set or building a query set. So we're going to define a, a basic query set here, which is a query object dot all. So this just returns all the server data. Now, what we can do here is potentially we're going to run multiple queries that are going to be utilizing this. So we can just extend from it and that's going to help us reuse or not have to type out the same code multiple times. Right, so now we have that, let's go ahead and create a way of actually returning all the categories based upon the cat, sorry, all the servers based upon the category ID that's passed in. Right, so if, so let's create a, 
an if statement. So we're going to say if category. So what's happening here then? So we're storing the category data if it exists. So if someone sends a request to this endpoint, a GET request, and it includes the category data, that we want to perform an additional task, of course, and that's to query the, the servers by category. So we're going to say if category. So apply the category filter if specified. And then we're going to say query set. So we're going to reference uh, self.query set, self dot uh, query set. So we're going to reference this query set here and utilize that. And we're simply just then going to extend it with a filter. So really what we're doing is just adding a filter here. But of course, we don't have to write this out multiple times. So we just extend the query set uh, filter. And then we're going to define a new filter. So that's going to be category. Uh, now, we can define category ID. Let's do ID first. All right, so category <coughs> equals uh, category. Let's try this first. So take a look in your models here. You'll find that the server has a field called category. So that will have a category ID associated to a category, remember, because it's a foreign key, which means that when we create a server, we need to actually populate this unless we specify that it can be blank or no, which we haven't. So this should have a category ID. So every server instance or record that we create should have a category ID. So we're going to we're going to basically filter all the servers by category ID to begin with. We are going to need the server model, of course. So let's just bring that in. So from dot models, let's uh, import server. So we now have a basic endpoint, which is going to capture a get request to this particular view. Now, we are going to need to be able to direct the traffic or the request to this view. So we're going to need to attach an endpoint URL to this view. So let's do that next. So inside of DJ chat, we're going to add all the URLs directly here for now, instead of localizing them. So we can uh, make a reference or we can go ahead and create URLs here in this app and then point the the main URL file here to it. But we're not going to do that here. We're just going to simplify things and just add everything here in the main URLs file. So in Django REST framework, we have a default router. This is a simple router that is included by default with DRF. So it's quite a powerful tool. It does allow us to automatically generate URLs for our API views. And this is why we're using view sets because it works nicely with view sets. So instead of us having to actually manually create our endpoints, and because this view set here potentially might have multiple different endpoints requirements, um, it just makes it easier for us to automate the process of building endpoints, which has its benefits and drawbacks, of course, if you want to create something a little bit more bespoke. Again, it's all about strengths and weaknesses, advantages and disadvantages. So let's go ahead and bring in everything we need here. So from, from the REST framework, let's go ahead and access routers. We're going to need to import the default router and we're going to need to then instantiate it. So router equals default router. And then we can go ahead now and create a new router. So what we're doing now is going to register a, a, a view. So we're going to register this view and then it's going to automatically generate the URL for this particular view set. So uh, what we're going to need to do here then uh, let's go for, we're going to need to make some sort of endpoint now. So, so let's go for API slash and let's go for server. So API server select. So that's going to be the endpoint API server select for this view set, which is going to have multiple filters. I think that's an appropriate name to use select. There are multiple names that we could utilize there, but I think select is okay for this. And now what we need to do is just access or just reference our view. So from dot views, nope, For, uh, from uh, server dot views, let's import our new view, which was called serverless view set. So we can just add that right here now. 
There we go. So we need to tell the URL patterns, if you like, that this router exists. So we just need to add that in. There's multiple ways you can do this. I'm just going to add it at the bottom here. So I can just add router.urls. So that's basically just going to concatenate or include all the URLs that have been created by this router automatically. So let's start the server and see what we've got. Uh, make sure we're in the right directory. Doesn't look like it. So change directory into DJ chat. Make sure that you're in your virtual environment if you haven't already done that. So just ls that again. You can see now I'm in the directory with the manage.py. Uh, so dot manage.py run server. Now, if you start the server, you might find yourself uh, with this problem. And I think this is because we haven't actually registered REST framework in our settings. So just go back to DJ chat settings here and let's just add in that. So this is an external, so REST framework. Just need to wrap that up. I was hoping black was going to do the rest, but it didn't. Okay, so REST framework, there we go. So just make sure that you restart the server if you need to. Give it a little bit of a refresh and there we go. So this is the root. Okay, 127001 colon 8000 is the root. And you can see here that it is actually providing us uh, an endpoint here. Now, something I don't think I mentioned was the Django REST Framework browsable web API. And that's what we're looking at here, the API interface. This is going to allow us to interact with our API through the browser, which can be useful for us to start off with. So here it's actually providing us a list of all the different endpoints that are available. So we have this one here. So it saves us having to type in any information. So we can click that. And now we have another problem, expected a response. So at this point, I just wanted to show the fact that we have created an endpoint. We've created a URL to that endpoint. This endpoint is now attached to our view. Now, the problem is here is that we are running, potentially we are going to be running this query, but of course we don't actually have any way of returning any data. So what we're going to need to do now is prepare the data from the database in a format that can then be sent back. And then we need to send that data back. So there's two steps there. Now, the first step is that we need to take this complex data from the database and we need to convert it into a format that can be sent across back to the front end. And typically that is going to be a JSON format. So we're going to convert this data that's been return from the database into JSON to then send it back to the front end. So it can then be utilized by the front end application. Now to convert that data in the Django REST framework, a serializer is the core component, which provides the way of converting complex data types, such as Django models in this case, into data types that can be easily rendered and used by the front end. And like I said, that typically is JSON, but there are other types like, for example, XML. So we're going to need to build a serializer. So let's go ahead and create a new file. Serializer.py. In here, we simply need to, I say simply, in here we need to define the the serialization process. So we need to identify the data that needs to be serialized that's what we need to do at this point. So let's go ahead and say from the REST framework, let's go ahead and import serializers. And then we're also going to need the model. So remember we're utilizing the server and category model at this point. So potentially we need two models. So we're going to import server and the category model. Now, when I say import, of course, what we're doing is we're basically just telling DRF, okay, this is what to expect. If we're going to be utilizing the category table in the database, this is what you're going to find, or this is the information that you're going to need to access the data, or when the data is returned from the category, this is the data to expect. So that's imported in. So what we can now do is we can build a a server serializer and we can build a, a category serializer. Let's start with, well, let's just think about what we're doing here. So we're returning data from the server. So we're going to need a server serializer. So let's create a server serializer. We could just call this server serializer, I guess. And then let's bring in serializers. 
Now, in the serializers, we have this particular serializer called Model Serializer, which enables us to utilize the model information from Django to quickly and easily create a, a serializer. So Model Serializer, again, if you want to learn a little bit more, check out the TRF documentation, which go into maybe a little bit more detail. But what we need to know is that if we're using Django models, and we want to easily utilize that model to create a serializer, uh, then let's use the model serializer. If I hover over, it actually gives you some more information. Right, so with that, let's go ahead now and define some class meta. So we're basically just going to tell it um, what model we're using, equals server, happy days, and then we can define what fields we want to use from that. And this allows us to actually refine the data that's going to be returned because at the moment I've just selected all. So I'm going to return all the fields, which means essentially that means that we're going to return all this data, all these fields, all this data is going to be returned or serialized and then sent back to the front end. Now I can simply just define what fields I want to return. So if I just wanted the ID, I could do that. But here I'm just defining all. Right, so with that done, um, that should be pretty much all we need to do at this point. Uh, let's go back into our views. We need to tell the serializer that, sorry, we need to tell our view set that we, we're going to be utilizing that serializer. So we are going to need to import that serializer in. So from uh, serializer, let's go ahead and import the server serializer. Okay. And then we just need to now, we now need to finish this off so we can return this data. So let's specify serializer. So what we're doing here is basically we're going to run the query and then we're going to grab that data and serialize it. So we're going to use the server serializer to do that. Now, question, I don't know why I said that. Put that in. My brain, my fingers are not in sync there. So query set. So we're going to specify query set. Um, right okay and then we're going to say well we're going to return many okay so many equals true and then that's it for now okay so that's our serializer so we're going to run the query and then we're going to serialize this the data that's returned we are returning multiple items so we define that and then we can go ahead and create our return so this is going to be the response response what do we want to return? We want to return the serialized data so we can access the data in serializer, serializer.data. Now we are going to need to just import from the Django, from the REST framework, sorry. Uh, we're going to need the response, dot response. So let's go ahead and import response. There we go, so that allows us to Return that, um, we'll put that outside of our function, yep. Apologies, uh, inside of our function, what am I talking about? Uh, the return needs to be inside of our function here, so let's just uh, move that inside. And we have a query set, undefined name, so that is, needs to be, well, let's try this, self.query set. Let's give that a go. Um, it says no module name serializer. Um, so that's on line four, one, three, four. Uh, so from dot serializer. There we go. Okay, so I think that pretty much uh, is where we're at at the moment. So just make sure that you've turned on the server. Let's give this a go. So back in our interface here, let's just uh, refresh. Nothing new. Let's go back into this and you can now see that it returns some data. Now, what exactly is happening here? Now, we only have one server in our data set at the moment, so it's probably not the best example. Okay, so we're gonna add some more data in a minute, but just notice the request here has a trailing slash or multiple trailing slashes. We just need to remove that. And that can be easily done here in our router register. So just don't include the last slash there. If I go back and just refresh, you can now see that's been removed. So that's the first thing. What's happening so far is that this URL endpoint is attached to our new view set. You can see that what is being returned, if we go back into your views, you can see what's being returned 
is self.query set. Now, this query set, in actual fact, is being triggered from here at the moment. Because remember, this if statement isn't being triggered at all because we aren't sending any category parameters. So all that's happening at the moment is that if we don't send any parameters, then we're just going to return all of the servers. So in actual fact, we created a query set where there is a default behavior, and that is to return all of the servers. Should, for example, the category parameters not be sent with the request. So move back into the browsable user eye interface. Now let's go ahead and extend. And you can see what I've done here is I've added the parameter category and then that equals one. So just go ahead in the browser here, just add that into the URL and that should take you to this new endpoint. Now this time you can see we have returned the same server instance but what we have done now is we've actually utilized our filter and returned all of these servers that are associated to that particular category. Now we can test that, of course. Let's open up a new window. If you navigate over to the admin, so that's 12700018000 and slash admin, login. Let's go over to category here and add a new category. So category two, let's add that in. So we have two categories now. So we can now add a new server. Let's call this server two. And we're going to add that to category one. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and add another server, server three. And this time that's going to be category two. Right, so this is going to be server three. And there we go. Right, so we've got three servers. The first two servers are part of category one. And then the third server here is associated to category two. So if we go back into our API view here, let's go back to slash select. That should then return, I was expecting that to return all of these servers. Now my understanding is that by default, DRF API views do not cache data. So they should always return the latest data from the database. So let's just go back into here. Let's just restart the server. So just rerun the server. We just refresh again. And this time you can see that it now returns all of the three new servers that we've just created. So we're not going to worry about this caching problem when we try to access data, when we add new data into the database. So you can clearly see now that we are accessing all three servers. Right, so let's go back in and try our category one. And you can see we are returning Let's try that again. You can see that we are, in actual fact, we're returning all the servers. So it doesn't look as though that the filter is working correctly. The issue being here, this line. This line does not update the initial query set. So what we need to do here is say self.query set equals self uh, dot query set dot filter. So now we're actually updating the query set with the correct information. So let's just go ahead and restart, although that's probably not necessary. Let's refresh. And this time we're just returning the servers related or that are connected to category ID one. Of course, we can go and test that with category ID two. So let's just change that with the new parameter two up the top here. And you can see that then returns the single server connected to that category. Good, so we now have a simple way of filtering out servers based upon the category ID. So I'm going to define a specification that in actual fact, we want to return the servers based upon the category name and not the ID. So notice that the name is in the category table here. It isn't in the server, but we have a reference to the category and we can utilize this foreign key relationship to access the name. Now to do that, if you go back into the views here, so at the moment we're using category equals category, which is utilizing the ID that's in or connected or related to the particular server. So we're gonna to need to utilize the name. So to do that, what we need to do is just traverse from the foreign key category in the server table, and then using the double underscores, refer to the name. 
So that's going to allow us to access the name of the category and then we can pass in the category name now. So let's quickly remind ourselves of the names of the category. That was category one and category two. Let's go back in here and we can now refer to the categories via their name. So cat one, for example. So category equals cat one. There we go, we have the two servers. And now we can obviously do the same thing category two. There we go. 